think it's like end of the republic like nastiness that comes out when the society is so you know so wealthy and so opulent that it doesn't know what else to do but what in investigating it what have you seen as like solutions or countermeasures to i don't know teach children other things maybe more moral or that align more with your morals well number one is don't send your kids to public school <laughs> so yeah that's all, that's yep. all i can say um i think that that will help a lot and i know it's, it's really difficult a lot of people that it's their only option um, I'm really fortunate. Yeah. I never, I, I went to private school and I feel really grateful. Um, but I think that, I think the root cause of it, of a lot of the problems we're seeing now is public schools. I agree. And I want to add to that point, Ian, I was in, uh, Chicago, Dundee, Dundee, Illinois, went to a bar, uh, over the holidays and there were slot machines along the back wall. And that surprised me in West Virginia, there's slot machines everywhere. You go into any bar, they got slot machines. They have places they call hot spots. You walk in, it's, it's literally just a room with slot machines. And it's kind of sad. I'm seeing these people who are afflicted by an opioid crisis in West Virginia, the, the sh shutting down of their industry, coal mining and things like that. So what do they do? They take their government check every, mo every week and they show up and they sit in front of a slot machine and just press the button over and over again to trigger that dopamine. And that's, that, that to me reminds me of that rat experiment where they put the thing on the rat's brain that when the rat would press the button, it would release dopamine. That's all it is when they go to these slot machines. Yep. But to see this in Illinois, I was like, whoa. Because Illinois, I grew up there, was always like, you can't gamble. Super mm -hmm. hard to do, illegal. It was only legal to have a casino if the casino was on a riverboat. So they have like in, in uh, Harrah's and Joliet is built on water. So it's legally allowed, even though it's like it's fixed. It's not really a boat, but like, you know, the laws. Then they have rivers and stuff. So there are casinos there. But to now see a regular old bar putting in a casino, putting in a slot machine, I'm just thinking like, this is the end of the Republic. People have nothing left to strive for. There is no community. There is no dopamine hit released in someone's brain when they help their fellow man. They want to sit in front of a machine and press the button until yep. they get and that. Interesting. That and the same doctors and the same psychologists that helped engineer these these people to gamble and to, to sit there and to give all of their money or their government check to that, that casino are the same scientists, the same doctors that have engineered social media, that have engineered the algorithms to keep people hooked on there. And I don't know about you, but, but for me personally, Personally, I, I do see the, the biggest groomer out there is the algorithm, is TikTok, is what people are being shown on, on Facebook, on, on YouTube, what they're being recommended, what they're being conditioned and mind controlled to believe to, with their perception of reality being shaped by these algorithms that literally uh, do make them dependent on those little dopamine hits that incentivize a lot of this larger debauchery and degenerate behavior. Do I, you think that's true or no? Yeah, and yeah. To, to add to that, uh, I, I think it was Tucker Carlson's show, they did a segment and they basically investigated the Chinese algorithm for TikTok uh, versus the American algorithm. And it was nothing to compare. Math so and science. The, yeah, literally. They're they're, they're, the, the Chinese one, it's an educational and you can learn all, all different kinds of interesting things. And the American one, they're teaching them about pronouns and gender identity and, and yeah. all that kind of garbage. And booty shaking. Same. Yeah. But yeah. I will give a shout out to the Instagram algorithm, which has been super weird because I don't know why, but it just started showing me billiards videos and it actually improves my game. Oh, <laughs> I mean, cause I don't know what I'm doing. I play pool for fun. And then all of a sudden I learned how to rack a proper eight ball game. I learned like proper English. I'm not good at it or anything, but I was like, oh, is that how you do it? I'm like, I had no idea. So I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm on toilet. I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling. And then all of a sudden it shows some dude doing like a curve shot. And I was like, Oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And then I'm playing and I'm like, I'm actually playing better now. Like tips and tricks randomly and algorithmically making me better at pool. Don't know why. I don't know. Maybe well, it's my name. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> well, they, know, yeah. they know what to, they know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The they, name kind of works there too, it, but they know how to hook you in. They know I'm, what, not like, but, I'm like a pool. No, I'm not a pool player. I don't go to it, Here's the clicking Yeah, but they know it's going to make you room. watch, right? They know right. it's going to make you Dude, interact with it and, and pay attention to it. It hears the clicking of the balls in the green yeah. room when you're playing on your phone <laughs> and it's tracking you. It's like a couple games a week when we're hanging out and, and like we'll come downstairs and we have a pool table. probably your last name. Yeah, right. It probably is my last name. But you know it recommend. But here's what it does. They have that auto scroll feature. You can swipe up and it will show you random videos. TikTok is similar. And then what happens is it'll show you a random video. Here, here's, here's, the, here's the reality. There's golf videos. I swipe right past them. It doesn't show me golf videos. It tried to. and I ignored the video. When the billiards video popped up, I saw that and mm -hmm. I watched the whole thing. And then it was like, this guy wants to learn more about how to play yeah. pool. 
I see that on, I scroll TikTok a lot and I see that a lot. If I spend an extra like three seconds on a video that I don't want to see, a random video, then my whole feed is just going to be that type of video. Yeah. And it's really, it takes, it actually takes a few days or weeks to get out of that algorithm and get back to your regular. It's super annoying too. I mean, and, and this is true for Instagram where I'll see a video and it like the, 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 the thumbnail, like the, the graphic they use for the overlay is misleading. So I'll actually watch it. And then not knowing what it is, I'll watch a lot of it and go, oh no. <laughs> and then you refresh your feed and it's nothing it's but that, garbage yeah. fake yeah. videos. And yeah. I'm like, Egh. just show me Jordan Clark doing triple flares on his scooter again. That's what I've, I've seen that video all the time. I think his name's Jordan and, and R. Willie. I love that Nitro Circus stuff. Yeah. So uh, what, what, Jordan Clark, he landed the triple flare recently, right? That was a big deal. Uh, I think so. Basically, sure, it's a sure. triple backflip 180. And it was like one of the coolest things. My Instagram is nothing but skateboarding, blading, scooting, and BMX stuff. But you get these videos, and then all of a sudden they start dominating your feed. I have to actively go in, and I'll start scrolling through and looking for skateboarding, and then watching yeah. it, letting it play, so it resets the algorithm. Yeah, I do that what, too. What happens to these kids, left or right? They start seeing political content, and they get sucked into it. Yeah, and instead of playing pool and learning how to play pool better, people are learning how to be a victim in society, or how to be the next craze, or the next uh, trend in society that's going to be popular and get them more likes. I, I, I think there's a lot more to this algorithm than we actually let on, especially since you know there's larger psychological studies talking about how they could control people's emotions, and if they could control emotions, they can control a human being very effectively. Facebook did this t oh, 10 plus years ago. I, I remember talking about it uh, whenever they were doing the studies on unsuspecting users. But how do you see this? Do you think people are just naturally the way they are and social media highlights this? Or do you think social media is shaping individuals to do this? Um, what do you think? Is it the egg or the chicken that came first? Definitely social media is, is shaping people. I think, it, weren't there studies or some some con, some something came out about TikTok and their algorithm, I think. And I, I think TikTok is probably the worst when it comes to all these social media platforms, I would say. Because not just is the, is not just are they shaping people. First of all, TikTok targets youth, so we're talking about young people in America. Not just are they shaping them, but it's the type of content that they're doing it with. It's all of this gender identity stuff and and all of this really making children insecure with their identity, and it's really dangerous. I'll tell you, I yep. watch pornography from time to time. You porn, shout out. Uh, and <laughs> why, I, Ian? Why would you do this? It's market research, Luke. <laughs> no, it's and, not. But, well, I tell you, I see trans videos pop up every once in a while, and I never saw that before. It's very disconcerting to see a trans person having sex when you think there's, it's a straight couple, cis couple, and then he's got a large... Cis is a slur. Unfortunately, yeah, those are I slurs. Should, you I should, should say relearn that. my language, I guess, yeah. to assimilate with modern culture. But I mean, that's another algorithm. Like, what's that teaching people? It, it's vulnerable it's, people, too. It's not just that. It's... it's I, I, I wouldn't say it's specifically trans when it comes to the porn stuff. It's any of the weird, insane stuff that's causing kids to face to have distress there was like there were some studies that and, and look and i'll put it this way you know we started this segment talking about gambling as a sign of the fall of the republic porn absolutely is in my opinion too now look i'm, I'm fairly libertarian i don't care you, you you guys can watch whatever you want to watch do whatever you want to do live your life i'm not a conservative a lot of conservatives don't feel that way and don't agree that's that's fine that's the you know by all means but i will be the first to say outright there there were studies showing that young men were becoming they were having erectile dysfunction with their significant others because their brains were being rewired by watching not like, I don't know the right word is like fantasy porn and, and impossible circumstance porn where like 12 women are swinging on ceiling fans and it's like orchestrated in this ridiculous way that's not possible for the average person. So you get these young men who are developing fetishes watching the stuff that they then can't be satisfied by just being with their girlfriends and it was resulting in ED. So this stuff, I agree. Low birth rates. So maybe when you add all these things together, when you, it starts to feel like a big conspiracy, right? Because you've got the castration of kids, the abortion of kids. You've got people advocating for reducing population growth on TED Talk stages. And then you've got young men having their brains twisted by insane porn free everywhere all over the Internet. With TikTok, you're like an expert, I would imagine, at this point. Is it like it's owned by ByteDance, as far as I know. I don't think this has changed, which is basically subservient to the CCP as are all Chinese companies at this stage of, of earth. Um, what do you know? Like when you're in there, do you feel the algorithm pushing you and twisting you? For sure. Yeah. What, in, the, in the what? Into, well, I search certain things. So I'm actively seeking out the videos about 
about gender and, and those teachers grooming kids and a lot of the the anti-white racism stuff. So I'm actively seeking it out. But they're, sometimes I'll, I'll scroll through it and I'm like, how do they know this video is exactly what I'm looking for? They, they feed me exactly what I want. And then you're like, I'm just going to repost it on Twitter. And then yeah. they're like, you're inciting violence. And then they write hit violence. pieces on me. They call me a terrorist. <laughs> you're like, hey, guys, someone made this video. Look, you're inciting violence against them by sharing exactly what they said yeah. on the platform. No, I'm a, little, a literal terrorist, they call me. Do you ever feel like I'm, you gaze into the abyss for so long that you become the demon? <laughs> no. That's like a Nietzsche quote, I, I, I think. I, I understand the point. Like if you're you look at evil end, long enough, but like, try and expose it for I, uh, long enough, it becomes you. Haya being like, hey, they're grooming kids, I don't think in any way has become that monster. Well, I guess a more gentle way to ask the question is, do you ever feel like dirty, like just remembering the things you've seen? Does it ever? It gets really, really dark sometimes. Yeah. yeah I can imagine. It's, it's really tough. It's, I spend a lot of hours looking through all this stuff. It's really dark. It's really depressing, but it's so important. So, you know, I, I kind of push myself, but there are definitely times that I'm like, I can't, I can't look at this anymore. How did you start doing that? How did you start doing this? So it was during COVID. Um, I started noticing all these crazy, bizarre videos. They were going, they were going viral, um, and I was like, "This stuff is so crazy. I need to show more people this." And I just started posting it to Twitter, and that's really how it started. There was no plan. There was no, you know, there. I wasn't. I didn't make a business plan. I wasn't. I didn't make a plan for how to go f get, get famous and go viral. It just sort of happened. Yeah, I remember like libs. Of, I remember when your account started getting bigger, and then I would be like, "I need to follow this. Like, this, this is like an excellent source." Like exposing yeah. a lot of this what people yeah. are doing in their own words i think it's yeah. i think it's a really good um it's, i think p more people should learn from it and i and i have seen others accounts sort of pop up and try to do it too which i think is really good it's such a it's such a good way to expose them it's the best way actually do you work with anyone else or did you start it yourself or I did you start it yourself and now do you work i with other started people? myself and now i work with others so sort of around the time when i was doxxed by tay tay <laughs> uh, we could get to that soon um, so Seth Dillon from the Babylon Bee, he is incredible. One of the most incredible people I've ever met and worked with. He stepped up and, uh, basically offered to help me, made this my career. So now it's full time. Um, and shout out to Seth. I hope he's watching this. He's really such a great person. He's always so supportive from the beginning, always by my side, always offering to help and in all of you know there's a lot of ups and downs in this and he was always always there for me so thank you Seth. What, what, what does that mean he helped helped you make it your career because the rumor was that he bought libs of tiktok Did i i'm i don't feel comfortable going into all the specifics um but he yeah he basically we partnered up yeah well there you go yeah he's amazing he that really guy's is awesome he's been on the show before yeah i love that guy yeah Cool. Is it like less work, like less, less strenuous work, but more fulfilling work now? Do you find it's still, it's still strenuous. I, it's, it's sometimes it's really hard. There are days when I'm like, I need to take a break. I can't, I can't look at this stuff anymore. And then I'll just take a day off. I haven't, I haven't really taken a vacation in a year and a half since I've done, I've taken off a day here and there. Um, but it's so, it's just some, when I, whenever I feel like, you know, am I even doing anything or I'm feeling down about the account or, or the content or, or, you know, maybe thinking any, any of those sort of things. I'm like, I feel like I have a moral obligation to continue when you see what's out there and you see how bad it really is. I'm like, how can I ever think about stopping? I can't, this is too important. I completely get it. I agree. You know, at a certain point, especially with the company we're running, I was talking to someone recently and, uh, well, maybe it was Seamus and I was explaining like with the threats, with the swatting, with all of the just as crazy as things are, he was like, this is why a lot of people would, they expect most people to just sell out, take the money and run. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you've, you've made a bunch of money quick, shut it all down, run and hide. But it's, 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 I guess for me and for a lot of people doing shows like this, talking about it was never about making money. Right. It was about like, wow, this is messed up. I got to like, I got to talk about it. You know, we got to, we got to tell people, hey, this is a bad thing. Yeah. Also, I think the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So the more they come after you, I think that also... I, I think that actually ends up helping in the long run. I think Ben Shapiro is a good example, right? It's, it's not like, I don't want to come out and say that being harassed, threatened, and attacked is a good thing for anybody, but so long as you're willing to stand up, people get your back. Yeah. And then with all of that negativity, like when he was at DePaul trying to speak and the cops told him they'd arrest him, those kind of moments get more attention 
and help you in your cause by yeah. shining a light on what's happening, the I'm, injustices. I mean, in my case, when I was doxxed, I doubled my followers literally within 24 hours. So, yeah, we got a Times Square billboard. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Shout and out to the Daily, to Daily Wire. Daily Wire. Crew. Yeah. Everybody, uh, give everybody Jamie some Bourne. reference with what happened. You were, I can tell the story, or you can. I mean, from what I saw, was you were just posting content, and at some point, Taylor Lorenz, a journalist with Tay Tay, Tay Tay. Yeah. Shout out to what's up, Tay. I do love you as a human, just so you know, man. Um, well, she's not hanging out with you because she claims to be immunocompromised, and she was all alone on New Year's Eve. You know, just you're gonna be, you're okay. Um, I mean, look, look I, I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the whole doxing thing and explain yeah. how that happened and, and that story. The long story short, just to give everybody a primer, Taylor Lorenz, it was, she was with the Washington Post at the time, right? She still is, yeah. Yeah, cause, but she's bounced around. She's like the, the Atlantic, the New York Times. Published a link to an address associated with you. Then they quickly removed it and then denied having done it. Like yeah. outright lied, like never did it. Never, and there were archives of it. So I put out a tweet like, they're denying it. It's crazy. Like we know it happened. Do I need to put up a Times Square billboard saying, you know, Taylor Lorenz docs libs of TikTok? And then Jeremy Boring of the Daily Wire said, I'm down. And so I hit him up. We talked. And he was like, bro, we can, we can help make all this happen. The Daily Wire crew basically organized all of it. And we got a billboard in Times Square. Apparently, she was freaking out. That's, that's what I heard. But what I want to say real quick before we get into all that, Taylor Lorenz posted a few days before New Year's that it was like low key the greatest of all time to stay home on New Year's because we're also exhausted. Then posted on New Year's how awful it was for people to be posting these party selfies when ERs are being overloaded. And right there you could see exactly what's going on with this with this Taylor Lorenz, this Tay Tay. I feel I felt so bad for her cuz you know, you know on t on New Year's I'm with my girlfriend, I'm with Luke. Luke's, you know, we got a bunch of uh, uh, my brothers there. And we're standing there in Times Square at a party. And the ball drop happens. And I get to kiss my girlfriend. We're surrounded by people with free food and drinks. And we're all laughing and like, ah, this is amazing. And then I see her tweets and she's like, it's good to be home alone with no friends. I can't believe people are posting videos. And I was like, damn, I feel so bad for her. I did kind of feel bad too. Is she lashing out this way because she's just lonely and desperate? That's what I would think, yes. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.